who came here tonight with thanks and praise on their mouth for what Jesus has done for us. Now I'm gonna ask that again. How many came thankful that God brought them out of a place of darkness? How many came thankful that God took you out of the bondage and out of the chains, out of the addictions, into a place of freedom and breakthrough and praise? Come on, if you're thankful tonight, I want you to give Jesus a big shout of praise. tonight we want to hear from you Lord tonight we want your message not mine not any man's we want to hear from you God Holy Spirit you're here the atmosphere is ready for you to speak God deliver your word change our hearts today people are going to get saved tonight people are going to give their lives back to you Jesus Tonight, people are going to be set free. And tonight, people will be set on fire forever. In Jesus' name, if you agree with that prayer, I just want you to shout amen. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You may be seated. Welcome to Wednesday Night Revival. Tonight is a night of revival in Jesus' name. And this is going to be a great night. I just want to say thank you so much to Pastor Marco for just giving me the honor to bring the word today. Can we give a hand to our pastor tonight? If you love your pastor, show him some appreciation. We love you, Pastor Marco. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that man of God just believing in me. We also want to uh, honor, we have some special guests, Pastor Green and his wife and uh, from a local church out here. Can we give a wave to them, Pastor Green, right over here in the corner. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're so honored that you're here. We love you guys. Tonight we're going to be talking about the fire of God. We're going straight there. Right now as a church, we have caught a fire that we have never had before. We have come to such a place as a church that we've seen miracles. You heard Pastor Marco talking about someone receiving sight. We come to a place as a church where we're seeing restoration. We're seeing deliverances. We're seeing expansion. We're also seeing discipleship at levels like we've never seen before. God has given us a battle plan to take over inner cities all throughout the world. And as we grow more and more, as we gain more and more experience, we always come to this simple conclusion. Everything we need to catch fire and to see cities on fire is all found in one name. And that's in the name of who? That's in whose name? as we grow more and more, the answer becomes more and more simple. It's all about Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. In his word and in his presence is where we begin to catch fire. Somebody say catch fire. The title of the message tonight is Catch Fire. We're going to learn what it means to be on fire for God. And we're going to step into our new season as radically born again, loving, gospel driven, bold, unashamed disciples of Jesus Christ. Who's ready to step into that? Tonight's message is like, to me, like four sermons in one. So if you're a note taker, which at our church, we're note takers. How many are taking notes tonight? I want you to get your notepad, get your pen out, because you want to catch this message tonight. We're going to talk about four things. We're going to talk about starting the fire. 
We're going to talk about keeping the fire. We're going to talk about using the fire. We're going to talk about how we lose the fire. I want to start with how we start the fire. Jesus came to this world to set us on fire for God. Jesus came to this earth so that we can live radically obedient lives in his name. Look at Luke 12, 49. It says, I have come to set the earth on fire and how I wish it were already ablaze with the fiery passion for God. See, it's always been a part of God's plan that Christians are on fire. God did not create us and then sacrifice his only son and then resurrect him from the dead just so that we can live apathetic and lazy lives as Christians. Jesus did not allow himself to be on the cross just so that we can check into church and then check out the same people coming in and leaving the same. Jesus desires that this church, the body of Christ, that we as Christians are set ablaze. And that's exactly what he has set out to do. It's because of what Jesus did that we can be set on fire. So when we surrender our lives to Jesus, he places his fire within us. When I surrender what I have to him, he makes an exchange and he says, let me give what I have to you. Lord, let me give you my anxiety, my pains, my stresses, my depressions. Let me give you all this weight and my sin and exchange that for fire. See, it doesn't make sense to anyone else. That's not the kind of business transaction you want to make in the world. But that's the kind of business transaction, the spiritual transaction that the Father makes to us. He says, give me all your weight, give me your sin, give me all your depression, and I will give you my fire. See, a fully surrendered heart is ripe to be set on fire. See, when I surrender, it's like I'm soaking myself in this, in this in chemical that's totally flammable. When I surrender myself to the Lord, it's like I'm getting the anointed pouring all over me. And then God reaches his hand out and begins to set us on fire. But it all begins, it all starts when we have a heart of surrender. Look at Luke 13, Luke 3, 16. It says, John answered their question by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who's greater than I am, so much greater, I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Faith in Jesus is the only thing that can start that fire. It's not our abilities. And I love what Pastor was saying earlier. What's more important than your ability is the anointing of God. I can't perform my way into a fire. I can't perfect my way into a fire. Are you hearing me? I can't cross every dot or what's the saying? I can't do that and get a fire. Because even if I tried my hardest to be perfect, we all know this. I'm not. We're not perfect. So we can't perform and act and do things to spark a fire within us. Because the, the dead can't do anything to start a fire. And before I know Jesus, I'm spiritually dead. But all it takes is Jesus coming down to this earth, revealing himself to us. And he's doing that tonight. And all it takes is faith in him to start a fire in you. I'm here to let you know that's good news for somebody that thinks that they need to be perfect or they need to get things together first. No, the true good news, the true gospel is that Jesus was perfect on your behalf and he is trading your imperfection for his perfection. That's what starts a fire. It's all in Jesus. Faith in him starts the fire. So how do we start the fire? By faith in who? Let's go to number two. How do we keep the fire? 
This is where I want to spend most of my time. Because the reality is it's easier to start something than it is to maintain it. You know how easy it was for eSporta to sell me on a membership? Easy. They said, you came at the right time. As a matter of fact, we have a deal and it expires, whoa, in two hours. And if you sign up right now, tell you what I'll do. I'll waive all these initiation fees. Do you, are you married? Yeah, I'm married. Oh, wow, I didn't notice that. Ring on your finger, you are married. You could bring your wife too. I can? You sure can. I signed up so fast, it was ridiculous. How many times have I gone? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Top secret. Starting something's easy. F maintaining and keeping that fire, that's the fight. It takes endurance. Someone say endurance. You know what endurance is? Endurance is continuing forward even though it hurts. I just ran a, uh, I was going to say, I just ran a 10K on Saturday, as you can tell. I'm just kidding. I just ran a 10K on Saturday with zero training. Worst decision of my life. I ran this 10K, and I remember starting off, and my game plan was simple. Don't sprint at the starting line. Whatever you do, don't take off. A lot of people at the starting line took off running. Boom. They wanted to get in the front. They wanted to be the winner. They wanted to get to the finish line. They wanted to let everyone know that they're faster than everybody else. And my job was just cruise in the back with there was, there's seniors running that race. I'm cruising with them. I'm seeing old Grandpa Joe running in front of me. I'm seeing grandmas with, like, Christmas hats passing me. And I'm like, stick to the plan, stick to the plan. See, this race we're in right now is not a sprint. The fight we're fighting right now is not something that we get done in a day. And I was thinking about it while I was on this race, and I said, what could I have done last night? What could I have drank this morning? Maybe more water for this race to be a little more comfortable for me. What could I have eaten yesterday? Or what could I have done? And you know what the answer was? Nothing would have changed it. You know why? Because I didn't have the endurance. You guys hearing me? Endurance takes consistent fight. I need to stay in the fight even though it hurts. So as I'm jogging, I'm thinking I'm cool. I get to mile two, I start panting. I get to mile three, my legs start hurting. I get to mile four, I start thinking, is this even worth it? I get to mile five, and I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. I don't know what's up with these grandpas and grandmas. I don't know what they're eating. I don't know what it is, but I can't do this. But endurance is just sticking with it even though it hurts. In order to keep your fire, there's going to be times where you're running the marathon and you're seeing people pass you and you're seeing people go to the next level or you're seeing things happen around you or you're feeling the pain in your legs or you're feeling the pain in your chest or you're feeling the pain of sticking it out. But those that get to the finish lines are those that endure to the end. If you're going to stay on fire, it's going to take some endurance. Someone say endurance. See, we need to keep feeding the flame if we're going to stay on fire. Here's a fact. Your fire can grow. 2 Timothy 1.6 says, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. Your flame is dependent on what you're feeding yourself. If I'll keep my flame alive, I have to feed the flame. And here's what's interesting. What happens on the surface 
what happens in the outside, what happens in just the things we can see, is not necessarily as important as what's happening on the inside. That goes exactly like what Pastor was saying. The anointing is more important than the ability. In other words, what you put in is what will come out. It's not what I do on the outside. It's not how when I perform and I clap and how good I look when I get to church and, and how good I do my makeup and my, put my shoes on and all that stuff and how high I jump during worship. As much as it is is what's going inside of you throughout the week. What am I intaking throughout the week? What am I consuming? Is it adding to the flame or is it destroying the flame? See, what goes in is much more important than what's on the outside. You guys hear me? When I was in high school, I had a bad acne problem. Okay? I heard people laughing. Stop. I had a bad acne problem. And when you're a teenager and you got acne, you're trying everything in the world. It's the worst thing ever. I'm a teenager, and for me... Acne is a medical emergency, so I convinced my mom, take me to the doctor. So she took me to the doctor. I'm talking to the doctor, and I'm thinking he's going to give me, prescribe something that I got to put on my face and I got to do to kind of get this acne off of me. You know what they say, don't touch your face when, you know, you got dirty hands and don't do all these things, right, all these things. I get to the doctor. He looks in my mouth. First thing, he looks in my mouth, and he says, you need to stay away from those hot Cheetos. No, no offense, Richard Montanez, if you're watching tonight. He says, stay away from those hot Cheetos because I love spicy food. I always have. I love spicy food, spicy everything. So I ate a lot of chili in high school. He said that one thing, you need to stay away from the chili. And I'm thinking, okay, that's one thing, but what should I put on my face? I need this acne to go. But I went home, and I cut chili out of my life. Believe it or not, the acne disappeared. Wow, it's a miracle. And to me, that was the greatest thing ever. My acne was gone. But I didn't realize something. God was showing me in that moment. Because I started eating chili again, the acne started to come back. Interesting. So deep. The whole moral of this story, I thought I had to lather my face with all these chemicals. I thought I had to put all these things on the outside to fix what was happening. But the root cause of all the acne on my face was what was going inside of me. The root cause of sometimes we think our fire's going out. We think the, the fire is dwindling. We think we're losing passion. We think we're losing our fire and our zeal for God. We think it's because we have to perform and do more things on the outside. But my question to you is, what's happening on the inside? What are you consuming? What are you fueling yourself with? Are you fueling yourself with the right things? If we're going to keep our fire alive, we need to feed the fire with the right things. When I feed my spirit, my fire thrives. When I feed my flesh, my fire dwindles. You know, another way we keep the fire alive is we need to be around on fire people. And I know right now, I don't know where you're sitting at, but I know you're around at least one person that's on fire tonight. I know up front, I know even in the back, we got on fire people tonight. Online, I know we have on fire people. Look at this interesting scripture, 1 Samuel 10, verse 10 through 11. When Saul and his servant arrived at Gibeah, they saw a group of prophets coming toward them. Then the Spirit of God came powerfully upon Saul, and he too began to prophesy. When those who knew Saul heard about it, they exclaimed, What? Is even Saul a prophet? How did the son of Kish become a prophet? See, he wasn't known as a prophet. He wasn't known to be someone on fire. But he was hanging in the right area. 
He was around the right people. He surrounded himself with the prophets. And, my, and the, here's the principle of life. Who you surround yourself with is who you become. If I surround myself with people that are not on fire, people that could care less about their spiritual health, but people that could care less about consuming things that hurt their fire, then I guarantee you that I'm going to start to become a very lukewarm Christian. But with the moment I say I'm done hanging around people that don't got a fire, I need to hang around some people that got a fire up underneath their, a fire in their bones. And when I hang around people that got a fire in their bones, I start to light up. You got to hang around the people that you want to be like. That's why being in an on-fire church is so important. When you're hanging around on-fire Christians, I can't help but just praising God in the middle of my battles. I can't help but lifting God's name up when it, I don't even feel like it. I can't help but laying hands on my sick coworker and saying, be healed in Jesus' name. I can't help it. So you need to get some on-fire people around you. Let that rub off on you. Rub off on someone. Just give them a little elbow real quick and say, it's time to get on fire. Another thing to keep the fire, and I'm spending most of my time on this second point on keeping the fire. In order to keep our fire, we need to give sacrificial praise always. This is why this is so important. Hebrews 13, 15 says, therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual. If you have your Bible, highlight that part. Highlight that word, continual sacrifice. We need to offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God. Proclaiming our allegiance to his name. That word sacrifice, the root word is thuo in the Greek. Which literally means to kill or slaughter for a purpose. In the Old Testament, a sacrifice used to be something that people would present. And, and the animal would be slaughtered and burned up. The reason today Jesus is saying we need to offer a sacrifice of praise is because something has to be killed and burned up in order to praise God. Now stay with me. When I give a sacrificial praise to God, something has to die. See, a sacrificial praise isn't an easy praise. It's sacrificial. Something in me has to die in order for me to give God that sacrificial praise. And a lot of times that thing that has to die could be something like pride. Pride saying something like this, I'm good, I don't need to do it, I'm all right. I see people shouting and screaming, but that's for them. They're baby Christians. I'm a little more mature. I just kick back in the back right here like this, hallelujah. But a sacrificial praise says, I need to kill that pride and offer that to the Lord. You know what else we got to kill? We got to kill lazy praise. A, sacri a lazy praise says this, I'm too tired. I don't really got the energy for it. This church, all they do is scream and stuff. Every time I come home from church, my throat hurts. Everybody be screaming. My ears hurt. I got a headache. And I'm tired. I got a headache. Well, maybe that laziness and that slothfulness is something we need to sacrifice and give to God and say, I'm sacrificing right now in the middle of my lazy mode. I'm going to give God a sacrificial praise. You know what? something else we got to sacrifice? We got to sacrifice all these condemning thoughts. Pastor hit on it perfect. He said we need to learn how to receive from God. And we need to learn how to kill that voice of the enemy that says you did that, that, and the other. Remember, you can't praise God tonight because remember all the stuff you did? A sacrificial praise pummels through every single one of those thoughts. A sacrificial praise fights through every single lying thought about you that the enemy says. 
a sacrificial praise says, I know who I am. I am washed by the blood of Jesus. I am a child of God. I am the head and not the tail. I am no longer accused. I am no longer condemned. I've been washed and I am set free. A sacrificial praise. Let's go of those condemning thoughts and give God the glory. I wish there was somebody tonight that would give God a sacrificial praise in this place that would say, God, I give you everything. I lay it all at your feet. I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's a sacrifice of praise. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Come on, let it out, let it out. Give him a praise, give him a worship, give him glory tonight. He's worthy of it all. Man, you know what the Lord just told me right now? A sacrificial praise is praising like you already got it. And you know exactly what that feels like. You know exactly what that feels like. I've been praying for this for 12 years. I have not seen it happen, but I'm still going to praise like I already got it. You know the way they describe David? David, they describe David's praise. They said he had a new covenant worship in an old covenant era. That means this. I don't want to get too deep, but all that means is this. He praised God as if it already was done, even though he was still in this place. Pastor Joe hit it so good last week. We're praising God like we're already in that promised land. We're praising God like the battle has already been won. That's a sacrificial praise. Sacrificial praise doesn't feel good. It doesn't always, it's not always easy, but it shouldn't be. It's a sacrifice. You know what's not easy? Going home and praying with power over your home. You know what's not easy? Pulling your family together and saying, we're going to pray right now. You know what's not easy? Grabbing your spouse by the hands and saying, we're going to pray over our home and over our kids tonight. You know what's not easy? Setting a standard and a culture where we praise God and we, get, we pray in our day and we start our days in prayer and in the presence of God. It's a sacrifice. Lord, have mercy. Someone say, God, set me on fire. I, I don't know if I could finish this. I'm only halfway through, but we're going to have to save this for another day or something. How many want to receive a fire from God tonight like you never have before? I believe we're going into a new year, and we're going to see God's presence everywhere. Not just because the way is going to go everywhere, but because you're going to take God's presence everywhere you go. I believe we're going to see God's presence in the workplace, in the school systems, in the doctor's offices, in the law offices, in the school set. I believe we're going to see God's presence in every industry in the city. I believe we're going to see God's presence in the streets, in the hood. I believe we're going to see God's presence inside your home, everywhere we go. If you want to walk with God's fire and anointing, I want you to stand to your feet. Give him one more praise tonight. like the heater just got turned on or something. Let's all stand to our feet. God's doing something tonight. And he's been doing something very strategic in our ministry. Where he's igniting within us a new fire. A new passion, a new zeal. A new enthusiasm. And what pastor said earlier is so important. The spirit of backsliding is being broken off tonight. But not just the kind of backsliding where we leave the church and come back, but the kind of backsliding where I'm still in the church, but I'm hiding. I'm hiding from the presence. I'm hiding myself. I'm pulling myself out of the fire. I'm pulling myself away 
from God's presence. Tonight that breaks where we're going to be so free to run towards the presence of God. We're going to be so free to be released into the presence of God like never before. You know that's you. If that's you, you're saying, I need that fire like I never had before. I need to catch fire tonight. I want you to make your way out of your seat. I want you to run up here to this altar. And you're saying, tonight, I'm catching fire. I need a new fire within me. I need new power within me. I need a new fight. I need a new faith. I need a new, I need, I need something new. I need a new praise. I need something fresh and something new. If tonight you're saying, I need a new fire, I wanted you to make your way out of your seat. I want you to come up here and we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise for those that are making the way forward. Thank you, Jesus. We receive the fire, Lord. We receive your fire, Jesus. We receive your fire, Holy Spirit. Lord, we need a reigniting. We need a, we need a new fire. We need you to spark something up within us like we've never had before, God. Tonight is a night where everything changes. Tonight's a night where everything old is being consumed. Everything that does not belong to the Lord is being consumed right here at this altar. And we're presenting ourselves to the Lord. And he's consuming us like a fire. If tonight, you may be up here already, but if tonight you're saying, I need to give my life to Jesus. The Bible says that we've all fallen short. We've all made mistakes. We've all sinned. And the price for our sin is death eternal separation from God that's what death means that's a price that's on our back but because God loves you so much he was willing to give his sacrifice which was his one and only son to pay that price for you to clear your debt and to forgive you of your sin so that you could have a new start because he loves you that much and he, did, he didn't do it because you earned it. He didn't do it because you were a good kid or you did good things. He did it just based on his love for you. He did it while you were still a sinner. And if tonight you need to rededicate your life to Jesus and you're saying, I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to repent of my old ways. And I want to turn to God and give my life to him. It could be a rededication or it could be a new commitment. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. When I count to three, I want you to raise up your hand. One, two, three. Raise up your hands. Raise up your hands. Raise up your hands. I see all those 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 hands right now. If you raise your hand, I want you to come up forward. Join us up here in the front, and we're going to pray with you. Come on up. Let's clap it up for everyone else that's coming up right now. close say Jesus let's say that again say Jesus I need you forgive me of my sin forgive me for being lukewarm from this moment forward set me on fire for you set me ablaze consume me with your spirit make me brand new I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead so that I can be saved. I receive you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same again. My life is yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on. 
Let's just give God some praise right now. If you received a new fire, just give Him praise in this moment.